This video covers dynamic SVG coordinate space. The structure of this video is as follows. SVG coordinate space revisited. Basic D3 array utilities revisited. Adjusting SVG coordinate space. SVG coordinate space margins and the summary. All right, let's get started. SVG coordinate space revisited. The SVG element is commonly referred to as the SVG viewport. Things within the SVG viewport's dimensions are visible. Things inside the SVG tags, though outside the viewport dimensions, are not visible. The SVG width and height are the width and height of the viewport. This setup tells the browser to set aside an area of 200 pixels by 200 pixels in the document for SVG graphics. This way, the browser knows how to place the rest of the elements in the HTML document. This setup also tells the browser that the interior of the SVG viewport is 200 units tall by 200 units wide. Why the difference? Two reasons. One, SVG is based on vector graphics, so it's not pixels inside. Two, units depend on the graphic that you are creating. So for SVG, when we talk about the viewport and what's inside, we will be talking about units. The width and height that we choose are completely under our control. We can make it as big or as small as we want. There are two ways to think about how to choose the dimensions of the SVG viewport. One is to let the data tell you how big to make it. Two is to choose hard numbers and to scale the data up or down accordingly. In this video, we look at way number one, letting the data tell us how big to make the SVG viewport. Basic D3 Array Utilities Revisited These basic D3 array utilities told us the min, max, extent, sum, mean, and median of JavaScript arrays. An accessor function is a function that accesses the contents of an object but does not modify that object. The anonymous function on the screen is an accessor function. It can be applied to each JSON object in the My Data Array to access the data of the X key or Y key. What we did not cover before was that you could pass an associative array to these functions as long as you provided an accessor function, which means that we can pass the My Data Array of JSON objects and it will give us the right answer. Let's look at an example of the D3min, D3max, and D3extent in the JavaScript console. First, we define the My Data Array, which is full of JSON objects. Each JSON object contains an X and Y coordinate. Next, let's call the basic D3 array utility D3.min on the My Data Array. Remember, for an associative array, we have to pass in an accessor function. As you can see, this returned the number 5, which is the min X of all the JSON objects in the My Data Array. One way to think about this is as follows. One, D3 iterates through all of the JSON objects. Two, for each object, it pulls out the relevant data using the accessor function. Three, each time it looks at a new object and compares the new data to the running minimum. And four, when it runs out of objects, it returns what was the minimum number at the end. Next, let's call the basic D3 array utility D3.max on the My Data Array. Remember, for an associative array, we have to pass in an accessor function. This time, we want to look at the Y key. As you can see, this returned the number 150, which is the max Y of all the JSON objects in the My Data Array. One way to think about this is as follows. 1. D3 iterates through all of the JSON objects. 2. For each object, it pulls out the relevant data using the accessor function. 3. Each time it looks at a new object, it compares the new data to the running maximum. And four, when it runs out of objects, it returns what was the maximum number at the end. Next, let's call the basic D3 array utility D3.extent on the My Data Array. Remember, for an associative array, we have to pass in an accessor function. This time we want to look at the X key. As you can see, this returned the array containing the minimum 5 and the maximum 190, which is the min and max x of all the JSON objects in the My Data Array. Adjusting SVG Coordinate Space One way to set the correct width and height of the SVG coordinate space is to set the width to the max x and the height to the max y. We just saw how we could do this with the D3 array utilities. 
which means we could rewrite the D3 creation of the SVG coordinate space as follows. First, we define the My Data Array, which is full of JSON objects. Each JSON object contains an X and Y coordinate. Next, we get that max X. This gives us the max X variable, which we will use for the width. This gives us the max Y variable, which we will use for the height. And then this creates the SVG viewport that contains the exact dimensions we need according to the data. SVG coordinate space margins. If you look at the D3 website examples and look at the basic examples, you often see the margins being defined as follows, as well as the SVG container being defined as follows. Why margins? The reason you apply margins is to leave room around the data points. In this instance, the max X is 190 and the max Y is 150. If we were drawing circles around each of these points, this would be the CX and CY of the circle. If we had a radius of 25, we would only be able to see one fourth of the circle because the center of the circle would be the lower right hand corner. For this reason, margins are typically specified. Let's look at what happens in the JavaScript console. First, we define the my data array, which is full of JSON objects. Each JSON object contains an X and Y coordinate. Then we define the max X and max Y data from the objects. Next, we create the SVG viewport based on the max X and max Y data points. Then we select all of the circle elements, bind the data, choose the enter selection, and append circles. Finally, we add attributes to each circle. As you can see, some of the circles were cut off because we did not specify margins, which is why you need to specify margins when making data visualizations. The summary. This video covered SVG coordinate space revisited, basic D3 utilities revisited, adjusting SVG coordinate space, SVG coordinate space margins, and the summary.